Hi guys, today I'm going to be making a kind of viking based house, but it has a bit of a hobbit flair to it. And to start with, building the base frame with some foam core, and just making a rectangular building with some pointy bits for the roof. And also cutting a base, also out of foam core, to a kind of rough oval, and beveling the edges of that. I then trimmed a door frame out of one of the ends, and used a mini just to make sure the sizing looked about right. Then, so I could embed the door, I glued a spare piece of foam core behind the entrance, so I would have a receded area. Then, with some thin pieces of balsa wood, I trimmed them to the right angles and glued them on the edges of the building, but only on the front two corners. I then glued another strip of balsa wood in between them, as well as on the front. I then worked around and with more strips of balsa wood of varying patterns and directions, I just built up the top kind of 50% to be made of wood. I also fitted a piece for the door frame and then using a sculpting implement, carved some wood grain into it to make it look like individual planks. I then glued it into the receded area in the door frame. And trimming some extra pieces of balsa wood to each side, I made a door frame and glued that in. I then attached the piece to the base using some hot glue. And I put it more on one side of the base because I want a turf embankment to go over and onto the roof. And to build up some bulk for the embankment, glue some spare pieces of insulation foam into a rough kind of mound shape. And then taking a piece of styrofoam and trimming it down to be the right thinness. I started constructing some stones to make up the base of the walls. And using a tinfoil ball to push some stone texture into them, before trimming them to the right shape, and then cutting irregular blocks out of them, uh, using a knife, as well as tearing them apart with fingers, until they look nice and irregular. Then, in a reverse jigsaw, just slowly built up the pieces where they fitted together naturally, without too much of a gap between them. And this is one where you kind of have to trim as you're going, but as long as they look roughly in the same space, it's fine. And going around the whole thing, as well as taking up most of the back piece, just using the same techniques to build up the stonework. And once that's done, I trimmed another piece of insulation foam to length and glued it onto each side as the roof. Then to cover the join, using some more balsa wood to cut some supports and then fit them as trimming. And making sure these stand a bit proud of the top so that they will have room for the earth. I then decided it needed a little something extra, so using some square cut bricks, where I was still keeping them somewhat rough and irregular, I glued together a chimney that would stand to one side. Because people get angry if you don't put a chimney on builds. Then, mixing up some sculptor mold and getting some weird bubbling, mix it together until it was a nice lumpy consistency, and then applied it all over the base, as well as on the roof. And for the first coat, it doesn't matter if it's too lumpy, it's more important just to get the sculptor mold down. Because while it's drying, you will have the opportunity to go in with a wet finger and smooth any lumps down. But you still want some kind of natural unevenness to it. I also used it on a slightly thinner consistency to fill some gaps in the stonework. And at a certain point, it becomes easier just to use your fingers. Then, 
give that a day or two to dry, and I mixed up a basing paste. So this is a combination of different flocks, but mostly cork flock, over kind of coarse and find a consistency, mixed with PVA, black gesso, and about two drops of water. And you need to be careful with the water, because it's too much, and it will be far too runny. But going in with that, and coating over everywhere where the sculptor mold's been put down. And this will just give it a nice earthy texture. And I also wanted it to be a little bit lumpy at the edges, just where that turf would be slightly overhanging. And once that's had a chance to dry, just going in and filling any, any of the missing bits with black gesso, until you have a nice consistent undercoat. And moving on to the painting, with a mid-brown, giving the entire thing another base coat of that. Then adding some white to the same brown to make a tan colour, and going in and giving a fairly heavy-handed dry brush to all the pieces, as well as using a more watery consistency to paint the woodwork. Here's where I made a bit of a mistake and also did all the stonework, which I normally do the grey before that, but in this case I did both the processes. And so, realising I hadn't done the grey step, I went in, and with a coat of grey, just hit all the stonework. With a very thin coat of the same tan colour, went in and hit the stones with a highlight. And for the dry brushing, grabbing a very soft, broad brush, getting a little bit of white. And applying it on the top sides of the stonework. And that just really helps to pick out the stone details from the tinfoil ball. As well as pulling it a bit closer to the grey colour. And although primarily for the stonework, just giving a very light dry brush of the white onto the woodwork makes it look a bit more aged and weathered and worn. Then with a green and watering it down quite heavily, just applying that onto the stonework to build up some weathering. And primarily focusing on the cracks between the stonework as well as in any crevices. And also applying a coat to the woodwork, just to mould it up a bit. And by going in with thin coats, you can build up some nice variation in colours, as well as by varying the strength and consistency of the paint. And moving on to the static grass phase, and using Mod Podge instead of PVA, because it should dry to a matte finish as opposed to a glossy one. So it should look a bit better if there's any patches underneath the static grass. And using a soft brush just to dab it on and get some kind of clumpy, disjointed patches of grass. And with a kind of mid green colour, just going in and coating the entire thing with static grass.
I then threw some tufts at it. And realising that didn't work, I put them on using a pair of tweezers with some Mod Podge for some clump foliage. And this is a great opportunity to cover up any small mistakes or anywhere where there might be a bit of the blue or the undercoat showing through. And just going in with a few different styles of tufts and applying them sporadically around the piece. And I think they always look a bit better when they're next to a wall where it's kind of growing out of the base. And don't forget to put one on the back of the piece as well. By putting tufts next to each other, you can also make it look more like a larger bush and you lose some of the roundness that you get with them initially. And to add the final touch, with an AK Interactive leaf hole punch, just going in, cutting out a few maple leaves and gluing them around the piece. And giving a slight crimp to the leaves before you put them on. And again, it's a great opportunity to cover up any mistakes. Where maybe the paint was a bit too thick, or it just doesn't look as good. And for the final final touch, with a small square of plastic card, trimmed down to a perfect rectangle, and with a bobble off a sprue, just making a very rudimentary doorknob. and then painting it a bronze colour with a P3 Privateer press paint. And once that's dry, with a tiny dab of super glue, attaching that to one side of the door. And although it's tempting, try not to press on the front of the piece because that can squidge the super glue out from underneath. And there we have the finished piece, a Viking house it is also suitable for a hobbit. And thanks so much for watching guys, I'll catch you next week.